everybody and welcome to my shop. It doesn't matter if you are a newbie maker or a seasoned builder. There are three things that you will have to deal with in pretty much every project and that is measuring, marking and math. And I have been struggling with math my whole life and especially ever since I started building things. And I remember it was the number one thing holding me back from starting a project because it would just intimidate me. Over the years of making stuff though, I developed some habits and tricks to avoid math in general. And even though I'm not as scared as I used to be of math, these tricks still help me to speed up my process. So I want to share them with you today, but before we jump into the tricks, I want to talk about measuring and marking real quick. Well, I actually use both a tape measure and a wooden ruler for my projects because they do two different things. The tape measure is awesome for flexible and long distance measuring and the wooden ruler is a little bit more rigid and I feel it's more precise on short distance and also line drawing. If we take a closer look on the tape measure, there is one thing that you will notice right away and that is the tip is moving a little bit and that is on purpose, it's not broken. It means that you will constantly correct measure. It doesn't matter if you are push measuring against something or if you hook the tape onto something. This little movement allows for the thickness of the tip and it's very, very useful. Another thing you might notice is this little notch and that is also super useful because it accepts the head of a screw or a nail. That means it one allows you to hook your tape onto a screw and then measure. It also allows you to use your tape as a compass and to draw circles or round corners. A very useful tip for marking things is to use either the tape measure or the wooden ruler as a marking gauge. You just use your finger as a stop lock and then hook the pencil to the tip and then ride the factory edge to draw a straight line. I use it all the time and you can do it both. It's easier with the wooden ruler but with some practice it's also doable with the tape measure. Now let's talk about marking real quick. I always like to use these sharp writers or a very sharp pencil because the more delicate your line, the more precise your cut will be. Imagine you mark the line with a big fat marker. Where, where would you position the saw blade in that big line, right? So with a very thick and delicate line, it's always easier to make a precise cut. And I always like to mark the waist side of the line with an X, so I don't accidentally cut on the wrong side of the line, which then would make my work piece too short, exactly the width of my saw blade. All right, so those are my tips on marking and measuring. Now, let's jump to the tips to actually avoid math. Here we go. First thing I want to do is I have this piece of wood and I want to find the middle. How do I do that without measuring at all? The way I like to do it is I eyeball the middle, mark it from the one side and then mark it from the other side, which will give me two lines pretty close to each other and it's very easy to see the middle in between those two lines. Dividing in half is always easy, but what if I wanted to divide it in thirds? I measure diagonally and find the number that is easy even for me to divide, like 50. So I draw the line at the fives and that is it. But how do I do that with a round object? Well, it's actually also pretty easy. I just need a piece of tape. Let's say I want to divide this piece of round stock into five equal parts. I just take this piece of tape, cut it where it overlaps, and then I use my technique of equally dividing it. And stick it back on. And there I have it. It's divided into five equal parts. Now, let's say I want to make a lid for this cup. How do I do that? How do I know what the diameter or the radius is? I don't have to know. Again, I take a piece of tape, stick it on there. Take a piece of sandpaper and ride it along the edge and that will give me a super precise template. And 
now I want to make a lid that is a little bit bigger than my cup. Do I have to calculate it now? Nope! I simply look for a washer that has the approximate offset thickness and then I write my pencil around the cup. And there I have it, a template with a consistent offset. A very big issue is calculating and measuring angles. Let's say I have this corner, some weird angle, I don't know how to measure it, but I need to cut miters for it. How do I do that? That's actually super easy. I take two post-its, glue them on either side of the corner, and then fold them in half. And that is the angle that I need to cut the perfect miter. When I deal with repetitive markings, instead of measuring a million times, I like to make a story stick for that because each time I measure, I have the opportunity to make a mistake. And with these story sticks, it's very, very easy to repeat distances. I simply use a piece of scrap wood or it could be cardboard, whatever you can find, mark my layout, and then I transfer that to my wood piece. You can even use tape for that or simply mark it right onto your ruler or tape measure. The best way though to avoid math and measuring mistakes is by not measuring at all. Whenever I cut repetitive pieces, I try to use stop blocks or markings so I just don't have to measure at all. To make things easier for myself, I try to ignore the numbers as much as possible. And especially when you work by yourself, you don't really need the actual number because everything is just proportion in relation to each other. When I realized it doesn't really matter if my piece is exactly 5 centimeters or if it's 4.9, the only thing that matters is that the pieces are in a correct relation to each other and that certain pieces are all the same. I completely relaxed around the whole math situation. And by just going with my gut feeling and eyeballing stuff, I actually got better at intuitive design and estimating if I have enough material for a project without spending a lot of time calculating it. And it just took the whole math pressure out for me. So if you at home <laughs> are dealing with the same things that I dealt with, I can just tell you it will get better, it will get easier. Try to take the pressure out of it. And if you're at home and you're really, really good at calculating, you could also try these tricks because I think some of them might actually help you save some time. All right, I want to end this video with a random tip of the month. And that is the easiest way to share a banana is to snap it in half. I didn't know that was possible. I do it all the time now. Please let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of videos, if you want me to do more tips videos, also let me know what's your favorite trick to avoid math. Write it all down in the comments. And I want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next week with a new video.